Hi, I'm Jordan from Kentner Creative. In this video, I'm excited to show you the Mackie Pro FX 10V3 audio console. This audio console is built for all types of events, including small live events, live streaming, audio recording, or hybrid events where you're mixing live events and live streaming, for example. Now, in this video, I'm gonna show you how to connect a couple different types of microphones, a line level source, I'm going to show you how to connect it to your computer, and I'm going to give my thoughts on some of the features included in this audio mixer compared to other audio mixers in the same category. Now if you want to see pricing or specs for anything that you see in this video while I'm working with this audio console, please check out the links in the description below. You'll find everything there, including the current pricing of this uh, Mackie Pro FX 10 V3. This is a super cool audio console that can do a whole bunch of different things, so I'm going to show you those now. On the back of this audio console, we'll start with the main power out options here. There is this kind of proprietary locking power connector here. So we'll plug in our power cable and screw that in. It's nice to have a locking power ca cable on something like this, especially if you're using this in a desk environment and you just want it permanently installed and don't want to have to worry about that. Uh, the on switch is already turned on and there's a USB output on the back as well. I'm going to connect that USB cable to the computer. When you buy this audio console, it comes with a A to B uh, USB cable. I had to buy my own that went from the 2.0 output on the back to USB-C, but that's totally fine. So on my computer here, I'm just hitting File, New Audio Recording in QuickTime, and I'm just going to hit Record so we can actually just select the Pro FX and then hit record. That'll allow us to have a recorded copy of everything that we do on this audio console today. So first of all, let's talk about the main outputs. Main outputs, it has XLR and quarter inch. The quarter inch cables can accept balanced and unbalanced cable. So if you're connecting these to any type of speaker or amplifier or something like that, uh, this is what you would use. You connect those up here to your powered speaker. Next, I wanna zero out the board. What that means is we're gonna Mute all the inputs here. Uh, by default, I want everything muted. I want all the white knobs turned all the way down. Uh, this one can stay up. We'll talk about this blend knob in a little bit, but we'll leave that one right in the middle for now. We want the input gains all the way down. We want these gray compression knobs all the way down. Uh, we want these gray knobs up, these orange knobs down, and these blue knobs up in the 12 o'clock position. Now we're going to start by increasing the level of the main output of this mixer to where it says U or Unity, which also stands for zero if you're coming from a console with faders on it. That's a great starting point for the output level of this audio console. Obviously throughout your event you can turn this up or down depending on what you need, but this is the best starting point for this place. Now one common complaint about this audio console is that yes, this level does not have any impact on the USB output of this audio console. This is just for the stereo outputs up here for your powered speakers, so keep that in mind. If you think that you faded this out, your mics might still be on and coming out of the USB output onto a live stream, so please be careful about that. That brings us to one of my favorite features of this console that is not common with other audio consoles in this price range, and that is the mute button. Not a lot of small audio consoles like this have mute buttons, and it's great that this does for the reason that I just mentioned. If you want to go off air for a minute or two, you can just mute your inputs and leave it at that. Another common thing is people use this console for live streaming all the time. It's a great format of console for that purpose. But with a live streaming audio console, you might have two or three different computers plugged into this thing. You might have two or three different microphones that you use depending on what you're doing. And this allows you to leave your mix saved how you had it for each input type. And then you just unmute them as you need them. That is super handy. Uh, it's a really nice feature to have in a console of this size. Next, we have the control room inputs with independent control room volume. So if we have studio monitors, you can use that. We have a headphone jack here, uh, so your headphone volume is there. There is a main mute output here. Again, that's just for your speakers, so if you get really bad feedback or something like that, you can just choke the speakers and then figure it out. So that's helpful. And then, uh, so your stereo output here 
will always, a copy of that will go to the USB on the computer. So keep that in mind. We'll talk about the USB inputs from the computer at the end. Okay, so what we're going to do now is we're going to plug in a microphone and that's going to help us walk through all the features of this mixer as we deal with that microphone. So first of all, we're going to plug in this XLR cable from the first microphone here. Now you can see that the first two jacks are combi jacks. They'll take XLR or quarter inch cables. Next, beside them in three and four, the XLR is separate from the quarter inch jack. On the first two channels here, there's a high Z button. That's basically a 20 decibel pad. So if you're plugging in a high impedance instrument like electric guitar or bass guitar straight into this mixer, that will help scale it back just a little bit to make it more appropriate for use with this preamp. Now below that, we have an insert. An insert is a quarter inch jack that basically splits out to a Y cable and you can plug either end of that Y cable into the inputs and outputs of an outboard piece of equipment. So what that does is it takes a signal from here, it'll loop it through an outboard processor and bring it back. This is common for something like a compressor. You take it out, you compress it, and you bring it back into this channel for the rest of its processing. So one day, perhaps if you're buying this as a live streaming uh, audio console, that might be a nice upgrade for you in the future. That being said, we're gonna talk about the built-in compressor that this mixer has. Below that, we have this low cut switch, which knocks off everything below 100 hertz and helps clean up some of that mud that's common in vocal mics. Next, we have the input gain, and we're going to show you how to set that up now. So according to the manual, they want you to unmute the channel and then turn up the gain until this green light here blinks. There's this level set button. So right there, it's just starting to blink. But if we look at the meter here, you can see that we're somewhere around plus three, plus six, plus 10. If this meter's not moving for you, then just press this two phones button. And that's no good. If we were uh, recording this right now, we haven't sent it through yet, we'll do it again in a second. But you'll notice that it sounds super clippy uh, when you're recording to your computer through the USB with an input like that. So we need to dial that back somewhere below zero. So we, we don't want it going yellow at all. We really want it somewhere between the seven and zero uh, mark there. So once we're there, then we're gonna turn up, up our, our input, input and now we can hear the mixer uh, through the computer. So you should be able to hear this microphone now. So now I'm gonna turn up the game back to where it was and you can hear what kind of clipping it has. So as we hit that plus six, plus 10, it should sound pretty clipped right now and that's no good. That's not what we want. So we're gonna bring the game back until we're back down to this kind of minus seven to minus four, minus two range there. Now a tool that can help us do that better is a compressor. How the compressor works on this Mackie mixer is it basically just reduces threshold and it has a fixed six to one compression ratio once that threshold is exceeded. So by turning this up halfway, we're reducing a bunch of gain off the top and once it's hitting that mark, wherever this line land, then it gets compressed six to one for everything above that. So it really helps to bring those louder parts down into an appropriate range. So if we're really worried about this zero getting breached, then we can bring this compressor up and it's basically just gonna put that limit in there for us. So that's a tool that you can use here. And now you can see that it's just not going past zero, even though I am talking a little bit louder now than I was, it's still not, br oh, right there, I got it to plus three. So we'll see how that sounds. See if you can hear any clipping there, but it does definitely help uh, quite a bit. So I'm going to leave that on. Now I'm going to flick on this low cut and see if you can hear uh, the lower frequencies drop out a little bit. It should just sound a little bit more clear with this on. I'm going to leave that on. The three band EQ here. The key to EQ is just make subtle changes. If you're doing a talking head podcast, just leave it straight flat. If you're in a live environment and you're getting a bit of feedback, just reduce the highs a little bit. If that does not work, then put those back and reduce the low, uh, mids a little bit. Again, if you want to clean it up a little bit, you can reduce the lows. If you want a little bit more vocal presence, you can increase the mids. But the key here is to not make the same move on all three. Now, this EQ will adjust the 
volume of those frequencies by about 15 decibels. So if you turn them all down, you'll just reduce the input gain by 15 decibels. If you turn all three up, you increase the gain by 15 decibels. So don't make the same move on all three bands. Don't turn them all up. You're just going to make it louder. And don't turn them all down. You're just going to make it quieter. So keep that in mind. Um, but yeah, just if you can't hear a difference, just put it back to flat. It'll probably sound better that way. Next, we have this effect send. Now, an effect send works kind of like an aux channel on this mixer. So we can dial it in, and it'll come out this effect send here. But if we want to process the effects, then we have that choice as well. So what we would do is we'd turn this up here to this unity right in the middle. We'd unmute the effects. And then we would increase, increase this, this here. here. Yeah, we, we should, should be, able be able to hear this effect kick, kick in, in now. now. Yeah. Now I'm going to turn, turn it off. Turn that off and put the mute on and turn that down. And that should get rid of the effect there for you. So that's how that works. And then we have our pan. So I can pan this to the right. You should be able to hear that. And now I'll pan it to the left. You should be able to hear that as well. Okay, so that's it for this microphone. So now we're going to mute this and move on to the next microphone. All right, so next we're going to do this condenser microphone, bring it up, turn the gain up, and as we can see, nothing's happening, and that's because phantom power is not on. So we're going to turn phantom power on, then unmute the channel, and then we're going to increase the gain here until we're back to that kind of minus 7 to 0. I'm going to bring in a little bit of compression there to help us keep where we need to be. And then I increase the level here. And now, now you should be able to hear this microphone. So again, if we want to make this a little more crisp, we can add some highs like that. If we want to make some vocal presence, then we can push the mids up a little bit. And if we want a more drastic low cut, we can turn the lows down as well. So lots of options there. Again, we can pan this microphone left or right as well. Uh, if you want to see the pan on the meter, just unclick that to phones button and now you can see what the main output is doing there. So a couple of different options for you there. But other than that, that's how a condenser microphone works with this setup. Again, just please really keep that number under zero if you're doing a USB stream uh, for live streaming or something like that. The next thing I'm going to show you is plugging in a line level input. There's a couple different ways that you can do it on this mixer. You can plug it into the line three or line four jack, or you can use a stereo input. What the stereo input does is it automatically pans them for you left to right. Now I'm gonna use a cable like this. This will take a headphone jack and it'll convert it to two quarter inch cables. Uh, this is a bad example, but you can see this one has a red ring. Red is always right, especially if you're live streaming with this audio console. Uh, you don't want to get those mixed up. It'll confuse everybody that's watching your show with headphones on. So I'll plug this in, and then you can see here we don't have gain for a line level input, but I'm just going to turn the track on here, unmute the channel. Oh, it's 5.6. I'm going to turn that up. And you can see here that we're getting input. Make sure you can hear it as well. I'm going to turn that down. So that's how that works. Uh, for 910, you can use this uh, 3.5 millimeter jack if you have an aux cable or something like that, or you can use an USB input. So now we're going to talk about how USB inputs work on this audio mixer. By default, it will accept up to four inputs from your computer, so two different stereo pairs. The first stereo pair comes into this blend knob, and you can choose to send it to your headphones or control room by switching that button there. Now what you can do with this is you can pan it to one, two, so you're just monitoring your headphones, or you can pan it all the way to this side, and you can monitor just the inputs on the mixer. So why this is helpful is if you're multi-track recording, you might want to be listening to the song that you're working on while you lay down a new track. If you don't want to, say you have a guitar amp or something right beside you, it's plenty loud, you just want to hear what's coming from the computer, you can do that. Now this blend knob is zero latency, which is really helpful when you're recording. If you're doing something like recording a live vocal, you'll probably want this right in the middle so you can hear the vocal coming in through your microphone 
at the same time as you can hear the track that you're working on through your headphones or your monitors. But again, maybe you just want to hear your input or whatever. You got to choose that blend that's completely up to you. The next input is 3-4 and by toggling this button you can choose to send this down this 9-10 channel and you can do whatever you want that way. You can EQ it, send it to the stereo mix or send it to an aux or this effect send. So that's helpful that they have it broken out that way. So that's how to set up everything common on this audio console. Again, if you want to see pricing or specs for anything that you've seen in this video, please check out the links in the description below. If you have any questions or comments or you want to see a follow-up video of how to do a very specific thing, please check. We do have a playlist for a whole bunch of different videos with this audio console, so check that to make sure we haven't already made the video. But then leave a comment in the comment section and uh, we'll make the video if there is a need for it. Also, if you want to see more videos like this in the future, please like and subscribe. Thank you for watching.